This is why I like to live unlocked and stay stock. Oh, bars. I mean, I can't help it, folks. Hey guys, welcome back to another video. It's your man Jay. So I had this big video planned to where I was going to go ahead and compare the iPhone SE with the Pixel 4a because a lot of people say that, you know, the rival, this is the rival to the uh, Pixel 4a. So I got another iPhone SE. I bought it the other day. And uh, the black one that I had was locked to AT&T, so I decided to get, just go ahead and grab this white one. Uh, but the Pixel 4a, to me, is the phone to beat. I didn't just make that previous video just to get uh, views or to uh, just get people to look at the Pixel 4a because it was sent out to me. It has nothing to do with it. It's, it's I review phones the way I review phones. And the Pixel 4a is getting used regularly and a lot of people say that this device, the iPhone SE 2020 edition, is much better than the Pixel 4a or you like it better. And so I thought I didn't get a chance to compare these last time because I didn't have a Pixel 4a. So I thought what better way than to just go ahead and buy another one. You know, it's 400 bucks uh, and this is 350 and let's compare them. So there's a lot of things about the iPhone SE that it already, I guess, on paper, uh, has an advantage to um, the Pixel 4a uh, and someone argued that that makes the iPhone SE a much better device off the rip but I say no I think it's more than that I think when you're reviewing a phone uh, you shouldn't always be in reviewer mode you should be in consumer mode and so with that I say this the Pixel uh, 4a uh, the Pixel 4a does not have the Snapdragon 865 plus which is the fastest processor that is being put in current devices for Android, uh, and it doesn't have an IP rating, and it doesn't have wireless charging. All those things are over here on the iPhone SE, second generation. It has wireless charging, has an IP rating, and it has the fastest processor that Apple is offering. So to that, you're gonna say, well, you know, that's an advantage. So if I switch gears over here, um, some things that this phone has that this one does not, uh, this one actually has a headphone jack which is really nice it has a much bigger display and it has a, a low price for the memory options so there's gonna be some washes and some flip-flops however some things that you can look at on these devices are the the, the apparent things so how many of you guys use wireless and I don't think a lot of people bought the iPhone SE for those things they bought the iPhone SE probably because Apple sold them on it saying it's the most powerful it has an IP rating as wireless charging. They might have sold them on those things, but I don't think that was the sole reasoning for buying an iPhone SE second generation. Uh, I just think this might be a good purchase for Apple people because, in fact, you do get the most powerful processor that everybody else spent a thousand dollars or more for, uh, and uh, depending on which model iPhone you got, and uh, you got it for four hundred bucks right here. But there's some limitations with that, so. The Pixel 4a has a higher memory options right out the rip. Now, obviously, the Pixel 4a is only one version of this, one color. It's just one of everything, and it costs 350 bucks. You get 128 gigs of storage, and you get 6 gigs of RAM. In turn, this has uh, 3 gigs of RAM and 64 gigs of storage. And if I want to get up to this level here with memory, I have to pay for it over here on the iPhone. And that is a disadvantage right there to the iPhone SC right out the gate. You know, so there's going to be that back and forth you know but ultimately it's going to be subjective and, and your personal preference of what you want to spend on a device is totally up to you so yeah you have a better memory option over here you also have a headphone jack and i think that some people think that that's like a play on oh it's just something that people don't use there's so many advantages to having a headphone jack it's unreal you open up the option to use fm radio you open and you could probably do that if you plug in with apple but apple is not going to allow i mean there's probably some um uh, options out there where you can listen to radio but I'm, it's probably going to require the internet and i didn't internet access and i didn't research this so if there are in fact um op options out there where you can use the iphone with the fm radio on the device via headphone jack for the antenna let me know but on android it opens up the door to something like that being able to use fm radio and, and what that breaks down to is that you might work in a place where there's no signal but if you have a headphone jack and you have an fm radio you can listen to local radio stations and the antenna will be the earplugs the 3.5 plugged in to your headphone jack that is a huge plus 
that is a major advantage to a lot of devices out there because some people internet access we've been sold on 5g and all this other stuff it's just not there yet folks so something as simple as that could save you it really could you could be working in a warehouse or somewhere or just somewhere you get way out in the middle of nowhere you're just on a long trip anywhere you just lost service headphone jack so both of these actually have stereo speakers so what i'm going to do is i'm going to try to play something on both hopefully this plays on the uh iphone oh you know what i think i might there we go it'll kick in Here's the pixel, and here's the iPhone down here. All right. So that's a quick sample from there. Now let's play the same song over here. And here's the iPhone. I'm holding them at the same length from the speaker or the microphone. Damn time I got that heat, let's go. Okay. Here's what you can't hear on video. You well you might be able to hear it. I don't think you can. First of all, let me say, both of these sound really good. Um, and it depends on what genre of music you're listening to. Now, obviously, I don't regularly listen to these particular songs, but they are good for YouTube because, well, they're from Tana and they're not copywritten. And they have a wide range of tones and bass and treble and highs and mids. And what you probably might not be able to hear on video is the bass and tones coming from the Pixel 4a. It is absolutely incredible for the price. And the iPhone has great speakers, but it just doesn't have that tone that, that you can feel and hear everything on this device. And it's something that, again, you'd have to get them face, you get them in, in your, you know, face to face, or you'd have to listen to them with me face to face, or we'd sit down together and check them out, and you would know that, wow, the Pixel sounds incredible. Now, sounds, looks, totally different. So, that display is what 4.7 and this display is 5.8 so you look at them and you get a much more full display and I'm gonna I'm gonna turn the volume down we're just gonna play a, a video here uh, just it's not so much what I'm playing it's the fact that I'm gonna show you the differences in the full screen and you get to see um, you know just how nice both of them are if you just look this is how that screen looks, a little square off like that, all right? And then I'm gonna show you the same video on the Pixel 4a. It fills the entire display. Now both of these are inside of a case, but you get the gist of it, it fills the entire display. That's what happens. So when it comes to the display, wow. I mean, the Pixel 4a is better it's got a 5.8 inch display opposed to the 4.7 inch display and i think that's something to be desired by a lot of people because the size of the devices are very similar uh however the screen is all screen on the pixel 4a and there is just no getting around that folks this is just a much better display it's 1080p OLED display and this is I mean just look at how I hold them up you can see the vibrantness but that's because you know the icons are covering this display and there's really no way to get around that they're both very bright the iPhone appears to be a little brighter I think the nit is like 620 or 625 or something like that but isn't this one like four or five I'm not sure but point is this one gets a little bit brighter but this one is super bright and it looks better so you know the displays yeah it's it's a good thing on both however you know you just get more with the pixel now another area that's hard to determine 
okay so here's how i measure battery in my real life in the real world however long i can stay off the charger and my phone is always there for me that is good battery life that's how the rest of the world probably outside of tech the world probably reviews their battery like that if they were actually going to review their battery you know most consumers if you walk up to them you won't be able to just walk up to them and say hey how much screen i'm trying to get today now to a techie they're gonna be like oh they're gonna jump right in and tell you more than likely but to the average consumer they're gonna say excuse me oh how long does your phone last throughout the day oh i charged it uh, at eight o'clock this morning before i left or i charged it overnight and i just got off work it's, it's 6 p.m uh, and I still got 42% left. That is how consumers are gonna tell you about their battery life more than likely. I could be way off, but I'm pretty sure I'm close, or if not 100% spot on. <laughs> no one's, consumers aren't measuring their battery life, you know, by screen on time. But in order to give you some gist of what it's like in a review like this, since you're not here with me and you're not with me all day, I can show you my screen on time and it gives you a rough estimate on how I'm actually using the phone or what's happening with the usage of the device at the time. So, but in my real world, I don't measure screen on time. I measure how long I'm off the bat, off the charger, and is it there for me? Is the phone there for me and on, and I have enough juice to use it when I need to? I got a three hour call, can it make it? You know what I'm saying? So that is how battery life is measured for me. And to close it out with battery, the Pixel 4a is better. It lasts much longer on a single charge. And yeah, it has double the battery capacity pretty much almost uh, as the iPhone SE, um, but or a third more. But at the same token, the iPhone SE has good battery for what it is because the optimization on this thing is great, but the optimization on, optimization on the Pixel is much better. It's, it's just better uh, because, uh, okay, Android and iOS, yes, they're different, however, um, the Pixel 4a's battery is fantastic. I mean, it will last you a full day. And, and you can swipe down at the top of your battery icon there. Um, and it'll tell you. So I have 84% left. And it's going to tell you that I have one day and five hours of battery possibly left. Can you kind of see that on the top up there? I think it's up there. One day and five hours roughly. So... This is something that, you know, and you can obviously do that on the iPhone too. It'll tell, it doesn't tell you how much is left roughly, uh, but I don't think it does. But their battery, the way they do their battery is kind of different. They're just now getting into giving you access to see your battery screen on time. That's new to iOS in the last 12 months. Roughly, right? Roughly the last year or so, they just now released the ability to see your battery time, which is something simple. However, it's not an Android iOS thing. It's just battery. It's better on the Pixel 4a. Now, I had this plan and some little small things before I go forward is there's a fast charger in the box you know uh you know there's no there's no fast charger in the box over here but I believe this can fast charge but you got to buy it so I actually charge this from an anchor which is 90 watts so it charges fairly fast for me uh but you know the Pixel 4a they give you a fast charger so you know simple things like that you know uh but you do get headphones in the box with this and and that's pretty good uh, you know if you if you want to compare some things that I really like better on on iOS, it's just going to be iMessage and FaceTime. However, Google Duo is actually fantastic, folks. I said it. I've used Google Duo. Shout out to my man Night Tech. We tested Google Duo in on multiple occasions, phone calls and video, son, and it is absolutely great. It's just that it doesn't have that driving force you know, from Google, because it's a little bit inconsistent across the platform. You've got Hangouts, now you've got Hangouts video or whatever they added inside my email box, and it's just a mess. So use one thing, messages on 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 Google, like the messaging, what should happen is, see the problem is OEMs get to scan their devices and then removes the stock stuff. So messages and iOS are one and the same. If I shoot someone a video or a large file through messages on Google, it comes across great, just like iOS, and it's even better on dual. However, video chat, I mean, and again, on Google, it's just not consistent, but on Android, on iOS, it is. We know iOS, iMessenger, and FaceTime. That's just what it is. I can 
do all the things I can do on iOS, the video chat and all that, I can do it on Android. It's just that it doesn't, the Android isn't there with that consistency of those two things across the board. Like if someone has an iPhone, they instantly have iOS, they, they instantly have Face, FaceTime and iMessenger. It's a given. But if someone has an Android, it's an option. You see, and I don't, I don't want it to be like that anymore. I want Google to flatten the curve and just flat out just take away the sale, start pushing all stock things. I know that's reaching because an OEM uh, can, in, in order to do this, they're gonna have to close it off because Android is open source, which is why OEMs can skin their devices, and change them and do all these different things. But it would be nice. This is why I like to live unlocked and stay stock. Oh, bars. I mean, I can't help it, folks. So, <laughs> <laughs> that is why I prefer stock Android. You get the real experience with, with, with Android. So let's move on to, I had this big theory that I was gonna do a bunch of photos and a bunch of videos. So that part of the video, I, I'm just not even gonna do it because here's the truth. This Pixel 4a is the top of the line camera. Nothing is beating it for photos. This iPhone SE, has fantastic video. It makes better video than the Pixel 4a. Problem solved. That's it. I don't need to show you a bunch of, these are things that you knew already though, son. You knew this. So for me to stop this and just start doing all of this different photos and stuff like that. But what I do want to do is I wanna show you video right here. I got my other tripod right here for my cell phones. And I'm gonna put both of the phones on this tripod and I'll start with the Challenger pretty much. Uh, right, we'll call the we'll, we'll call the Pixel 4 the Challenger because it is the newer device. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna test the front video for both of these uh, just right here in this same spot and let's see how well they actually can handle a vlog style like this. So let's shut off this camera and let's turn on these two cameras. So first up is gonna be the Pixel uh, and um, Let's get it going here. All right, so here is the Pixel 4a indoors in this exact same setting sitting right here. And as I look through the viewfinder, the front camera, mm, meh, not the best. Let's switch over to the iPhone. Now the iPhone brightens up the video a lot more. It's just a completely different tone on the front camera. And that's just what it is. So if I'm gonna use a vlog, I'm gonna pick the iPhone's front camera for a vlog, not the Pixel. All right, so here is the iPhone's rear camera for video. iPhone doesn't have any kind of crop or anything, so I still sat it in the same spot. I kind of pushed it forward a little bit. Uh, but nonetheless, here is rear video on, on the iPhone, and you can see the difference in quality between the two. All right, now uh, I'm trying to get the Pixel 4a set up. This is the rear camera, and the rear camera has a little bit of a crop, so I'm kind of got a little bit farther back on the Pixel. Uh, it has a crop when you're doing 4K, but 1080p is good. So, uh, but here is the Pixel's rear camera for video. All right, so those are the those are the cameras for video. Again, I wanted to show video because uh, I could easily tell you that, you know, the Pixel has bad cameras. The Pixel doesn't have bad cameras for video, but if it, I, a device has to perform in a setting that I'm realistically gonna use it in, and this will be the setting. This lighting and everything, and you can see how both devices uh, actually perform, so I'm pretty sure you'll prefer the iPhone in this setting. So again, photos, you know, the, the iPhone is good, uh, but it, it, it won't measure up to the to the Pixel. So I guess to be fair, now let's uh, let's just do this here. And now let's take a look at the Pixel. The Pixel looks natural. Uh, the iPhone looks natural. Uh, it's the iPhone kind of kind of blows it out a little bit more than I like. Uh, but reality is, both phones take great photos. I just prefer the Pixel more. There's no wrong answer to which photo or video you like better. This is my perspective, so keep that in mind. So, you know, they both have a fingerprint reader. They're both fast. You know, 
that's just what it is. It's, it's a matter of preference uh, when it comes to these devices. But I can tell you that overall, if a person is going to pick a device, either one of these are going to be fine, folks. They're going to be fine. You won't go wrong with either one. But I wanted to compare them both here in my house because I've heard a lot of people say that the iPhone SE smashes the Pixel 4a. And I've heard a lot of people say that the 4a smashes the iPhone SE when in reality in my house, neither one smashes either one. It's a matter of preference. <clears throat> and if, if you had 400 bucks, now here's the real deal. If we were sitting in front of each other and you had 400 bucks and you say, hey, Jay, I need a phone like right now. This is your phone. This is your phone. The Pixel 4a. It is just the smarter, better purchase. And the iPhone, yeah, it has the fastest processor in the world. It's got IP rating, it's got wireless charging, but it also lacks in a lot of areas. A lot of areas where the Pixel 4a does great at. So if you're picking a device um, and you, you really want someone's opinion on it, I hope that's why you come here sometimes so you can get kind of a real world analysis of these devices that you choose to spend your hard on money on. Don't forget the shirts are down below in the description. They're probably flashing on the video. Uh, you can hit me up and buy me a coffee if you like. I'm out of creamer. So all the people who bought me a coffee, I appreciate it. <laughs> I'm out of creamer though. So uh, hit your man up and go ahead and hook him up with some coffee so I can go ahead and get those creamers in house and get my Keurig. Fire back up against the coffee mug and Keurig. You probably can't. It's, oh, it's not showing in video, but it's kind of over there. Nonetheless, it's your man J. A mild comparison of the devices. Two devices that are actually really good. There's no, again, there's no wrong answer to what you like or dislike. Remember that. You are in the control of what you purchase. You're just here looking at me because maybe you like my opinion. Maybe you think I'm not biased, which I'm not biased. Uh, maybe you just like to see what I have to say. It's your man, Jay. Bars again. I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care.